Hey guys, can't believe it's Friday already. Do you know that Friday comes after Thursday? But it's before the favourite day of my week, Saturday. Can't wait for Saturday this week. My Saturday, long ride, long run, time with the family, time with friends. It's always a great time of the time of the week. Um, thanks to everyone's feedback for episode one. It was a little bit of a hit. Certainly gave people um, enough to, to really see different things during the week. Um, and and really maximise their the professional development in a short amount of time. Um, this week's uh, I've jam packed. It's it's going to do um, going to really give you a, a heads up in what's really hot around the world again. They're things that are real personal to me and things that um, I've been speaking to with other educators over the last seven days. So here we go, guys. Number seven. One of the uh, big conversations I was having with a lot of people over in Hong Kong was all about plagnets and the extension of, of plickers in terms of being able to use it in solo taxonomy. And it really got people excited uh, about what was going to be possible in their room to be able to let go of the reins of control. Uh, the Phys Ed Depot had an amazing write-up on the plickers magnets and how uh, Mike was able to really change his assessment system and transform his, his classroom. Um, what was really cool is the collaboration between Mike and, and Joey Fife from uh, the Physio, Physical Educator um, and took the Plickers assessment magnets into a, um, a way that the kids could really see the vocab that, uh, that went with transformation as well with the not yet getting there, got it and wow. Um, and on Joey's and both Mike's websites, they have how-to videos, which I loved about these two websites because... Uh, me included, we're able to watch the videos, get a real solid understanding before we added an extra thing to our PE departments, which were already jam-packed with some unbelievable ideas. And I think that's one of the biggest things that we've got to be really careful of in, in certainly education is putting too much in because we're going to confuse the kids. This is someone I'm, something I'm happy to take a few things out of because the transformational knowledge and growth of kids is astronomical um, from the, the, the four posters of, wow, got it, getting there, not yet. Number six. Number six was a tweet of connecting rope through pool noodles which was unreal. Uh, Ross was using these as a teacher hack for the creation of mini golf courses around the gym, which is unreal because they, they're able to keep the pool noodles together, whereas often we use these things and they get kicked around. High five. Number five has to go to my boys at Dude Perfect. I use Dude Perfect so much um, as provocation in learning to really motivate kids to be able to engage, but to also do something different and get out there with their skills and, and be creative. Um, Dude Perfect, I use these guys a lot in my target game units. If you haven't seen it, go to YouTube, Google Do Perfect. They've also got their own web website, doperfect.com, and you'll be amazed at what they can do. Number four. Number four, Heads Up PE. Uh, we, we spoke about the Phys Edmus book, um, and Heads Up PE posted their own Phys Ed advent calendar, which went bananas. So well done, Heads Up PE, for really getting involved. Three. Number three has to go to one of my all-time favorite websites at the moment, Adobe. Um, I'm using Adobe Post in this example um, that I'm putting forward to you here because it revolutionized myself as a non-graphic designer to something that I had the wow factor in PE. It was so simple to be able to use that um, when I go around and present and do a little bit of work for Adobe, I, I share with people the, the importance of being able to advocate the message from what's happened live back into the classroom straight away. And what I loved about this is that I was able to capture learning through a photo. 
write a message, send it off to the classroom teacher, and then the classroom teacher can have it up on their screen before the kids arrive back into the classroom. So the kids straight away are encapsulized about how important digital media and ICT are in education. The other thing I loved about Adobe Post is that it creates an atmosphere of wanting to know more. In your PE departments, you all have great events that you're trying to attract parents to and get parents into. Setting it up through an amazing poster attracts those parents to be able to want to know more. Don't give them everything in the poster because you want to get them to in to ask a question because the conversation can then flow. But I strongly recommend you go and visit Adobe Post or Adobe Spark and have a look at their different products because it will really help engineer the elements of change in your PE program that you need and that's the support of parents, the support of the community, and certainly the support of the rest of your, your school. Number two. Number two goes to my good mate, Adam Laveau. So Mr. Adam PE is his website. And on his blog post this time around, he was looking at hyperdocs. And this really caught my imagination. Um, Adam sent this to me initially just to really um, spark a bit of conversation and, and said to me, this is something that I reckon that you will like. Well, he was absolutely right. Um, through the hyperdocs, he shows there how he sort of creates them and what they all mean. But what I really, really love is this example coming up where he was able to use Google Slides as a platform to store the, um, the information, but then inside that um, Google Slides was able to link the learning that was required for his students in five easy steps, where the kids were able to look at different experiences in each of those through hyperlinks, um, and being a URL-based approach with the, uh, the Google Slides, Adam was then able to link these to different websites so the kids had everything they needed in front of them in terms of provocation, depth of knowledge, um, questions through assessment, and then the, what is the next level in terms of where the kids need to go. Um, very, very, very cool idea, uh, Mr. Laveau, and I was super impressed, and you got me thinking about different things that I can use, especially in, in early kids with um, like fundamental motor skills approach, uh, but also that inquiry-based learning is valuable and important as well, and, and being able to get kids to really give their idea without us giving them the answers is huge in terms of student growth. So well done, Mr. Laveau. You pick up number two this week. Which leaves us with number one for this week. Which does leave us to number one. So number one this week, I guess I had to leave it to the Phys Edmus crew. Um, the Phys Edmus crew, Aussie Phys Ed, three years in a row we've produced a uh, Christmas book. Um, the very first year, it was one week uh, we gave the team. The, the second year, we gave them two weeks to write the book. This time around, this book was written by four authors in, inside um, four to six days. So the, the, the book itself, through a shameless uh, promotion here, was really what we've seen as some of the, the best activities that we've um, been able to use in our classrooms throughout the year. Um, some of them we've created um, others we've adapted uh, from a great idea and, and really put a Christmas spin on it. So you can see here right through this book um, that there are some amazing things that should going to keep the kids busy and entertained right up until the busy Christmas period. Um, and then as teachers, you can really engage the kids into what is happening in the, inside the next few weeks. So Phys Edmus is right there for a free download. Um, which I'll put a link in the um, in the blog post as well. So that is number one this week. There you go, folks. Episode two. Happy Friday, everybody. I did tell you it was going to be jam-packed. Plagnets, it's still one of my favorite things. I remember coming back from Seattle a couple of years ago, and Plickers really made a massive impression on me. Um, 
Hyperdocs, something new. I'm going to spend some time over the summer, our summer here in Australia, putting things together and, and creating some really cool units of work. Do Perfect, can't wait to get into my Target Games unit next year because Do Perfect as a provocation is all about taking risks, and without risks, we're never going to grow. So, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching episode two. Join me next week, episode three. Have a great weekend. Happy Friday, everyone.